In today's video, I'm going to be attempting to conquer Chinaman Gulch here in the San Isabel National Forest, just outside of Buena Vista, Colorado. Absolutely beautiful out here. Now this trail right here is gonna be the most difficult trail I have ever tried to tackle. Uh, it's rated at nine out of 10. I expect there to be pretty big boulders. I'm gonna be hitting on my skids, my rock sliders. Um, I feel like I'm fairly well equipped though. I'm sitting on 35 inch tires. I have them aired down to 17 PSI. I do have lockers as well as a winch. So I'm hopeful I can get through here and I'm crossing my fingers I can get through here without any body damage and hopefully no breakages. So that's the other thing, breakages are a possibility. Uh, so uh, let's jump right in this trail. I don't think it's super long, but like I said, it's super difficult and super technical. Now, right off the bat, this trail starts off with this pretty technical rock climb right here. I don't think I'm gonna take this line. I think the best line I'm gonna be able to take is what most people have been taking, which is right here, up and over. So I'm gonna set up my camera on my tripod and see if I can conquer it. I was looking at this line. I think I'm gonna attempt this line. So I'm gonna attempt right here and then I'll move the camera once I get out of frame. And there's another little section right here. So let's see if we can do this. through that first test uh, with all the dirt on it it is very very slick actually I didn't have to use lockers or anything but um, I did have to bump it a little bit and uh, I'll turn the camera because here's the next section right here that we need to go right into which I think I'm probably gonna do a two-point turn and get my driver's tire right up there and passenger rear tire right there that's gonna be the goal anyway so let's see if I can do that So this one right here is looking a little more difficult. So, cause this is an uphill. 
So I can get through all this fine. This little boulder field, tire placement, that's really all that matters. But once I get up here, this is where I'm a little bit worried. Do I go this way? It looks like people have been piling up rocks right here so they can run their tire up here. And that's actually probably the best way because the thing I'm worried about going over here is that I'll get kicked right into this rock right there. I mean, I could potentially try to run right here, but my diff housing, my pumpkin's gonna scrape right on that. I'll probably get caught on my diff housing if I try running right up the middle. I think it's smarter to try to just take an easier line up. Don't wanna break anything. I just looked up on an app that I'm running. It's called the uh, Onyx Off-Road. Um, it says that this trail is 6.4 miles long and you can expect to take about three hours. So it's just a loop, but obviously if you keep on hitting those decent size obstacles around every corner, you can see how that would take three hours. So uh, we're gonna be here for a while, but uh, I'm not gonna really showcase this smaller stuff because the smaller stuff is just like bumpy and we can get over it, no problem. I just wanna show you guys the challenging stuff. So I'll resume video when we get to another rock obstacle.
more than I thought it was gonna. I don't know. Hopefully that picks it up on camera, but unfortunately you're on the wrong side. But pushed my rooftop much more into that rock than I was anticipating. But uh, we made it, so let's keep on going. So far I can tell you this trail is not for the faint of hearts. This is one where you probably want lockers. I've yet to use them, but I've been doing a lot of downhill so far. But so far, the, this has like a limited slip, which works pretty well in the uh, Jeep. So uh, you really don't need the lockers most of the time. I might encounter a situation at some point where I have to run my lockers. But so far, no lockers, just sway bar disconnected, four low. Also, by the way, if you're enjoying these types of videos, these off-road videos, anything automotive, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Also hit that bell because I travel a lot. Not only do I travel for work, I enjoy traveling um, on vacation as well. And I like off-roading my Jeep and I like testing myself and my skills and testing my Jeep and just seeing what it's capable of doing. You know, this thing's not super far from stock. You don't need a super crazy rig to do some of these trails. It would be easier, yes, but not necessary. And the other thing you gotta get used to is just how tippy the vehicle's gonna feel. Like, I, it feels way tippier, I think, than what it looks like from the outside. I don't think we're in that big a danger of tipping. It just feels like we are. Trying to film and drive one-handed. Try to go up on the high side, like that. All right, even around. The camera just does not seem to do this stuff justice. I mean, you can't really tell on camera how steep this is of a downhill. Also, if you hear some squeaks and stuff, it's probably a combination of stuff. Main thing is um, sometimes my, uh, my sway bars, my sway bars have a way of coming up and you can see what's actually happened. They come up and they actually hit my inner fender. So when I'm flexed out and this, this uh, tire right here gets pushed up into the fender well, uh, that hits right there and that's bending that up. So you might hear that some. Same thing's happening on the other side kind of as well. It's kind of bent it out of shape. So that's no good. All right, and just around the next corner, another challenging obstacle. We're gonna want to go high with our passenger tire right here because this is a huge V-notch. 
that's probably down two and a half. That's up to my hip almost. So we're gonna wanna keep our passenger tire high, driver's tire over here, and kind of just straddle this all the way down as much as we can, just trying to keep our tires as high as possible. So let's see if I can do this. Now I'm just going to spin the camera and you guys can watch the uphill. You can see, I think the storm is maybe rolling this way, which is a bit concerning. So got to keep on moving so right now it is starting to spit rain which is not ideal and we have to go down this immediately and there's a few different options I could go far left but I'm probably gonna stay far right and just hug and try to go right down through here I think that should be pretty doable
Yeah, I just really need to avoid that rock right there. I mean, I could try to feather it through here, but I think I'm going to want to go over here and go high. Super high. And then down. Maybe I will just go down right through here. We're definitely going to skid our way down though. But it's looking a little more promising actually. Because it's not as tippy. So let me turn the camera this way a little bit. We're going to be coming down that way now. I don't like that way now. I'd have to go very high on that side. But see if we can make it down through here. We're definitely going to be hitting skids. was a better line but we came down really hard all right we're taking a quick break get, got my dog out of the car so you can go to the bathroom get a quick drink um but the rain is coming in obviously and that's not ideal it looks like we're maybe almost i don't know i'm not sure if we're halfway we might only be about a third of the way hopefully it doesn't get too wet because that could make it a lot sketchier especially since we're going to be turning uphill but uh if you do enjoy this video in this excitement, make sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to my channel because uh, this is the type of videos I like to do. I also have a 1972 Volkswagen Bug. Might do videos on that. Anything automotive basically is what this channel is all about. And one and done, I came up with the name because it was like one upgrade and done. When I bought my Jeep, the plan was just upgrade, you know, put a lift on it, big tires, and that was it. But then I kind of went crazy after that. It's not a crazy build. Like, it's still on 35s. It's a daily driver, but I mean, I've decked out a little bit more than I probably needed to. But uh, let's get uh, back in the Jeep and keep on moving. It appears we're at the base of the canyon now because we're now back at ground level. Once you're at the bottom, you're kind of rewarded with a little short, um, I think this is actually a county road section, this part right through here, because this part's actually maintained. But I'm sure once we get up here and turn left, we're gonna start heading uphill again. So that's a quick reward is you get a nice smooth trail at the very bottom, but I think it's probably for like a quarter mile or less. Once we get turn to the left i think it's going to start going uphill again all right so that tells us right here this right here is carnage canyon there's a sign for it so we're going to be heading up this way that's some guy on his dirt bike up over there so this part is carnage canyon and i wish i couldn't i would have known that you could come in through here i actually went by over there yesterday because my plan was come in but there was a gate i didn't check to see if they had a lock on it but not this gate but down at the other end down by where that little white house is there was a gate there that was gated so i figured that was private property and you weren't allowed to come through here but today obviously that guy that truck clearly came in through there maybe all you have to do is open the gate so maybe i took the hard way in here but either way we still got to find our way out beautiful views though so let's keep on moving what have i gotten myself into oh god guys i need to get out and check this out Okay, so Carnage Canyon, there's a sign here, Carnage Canyon, extreme 4x4 route, tread lightly, stay on trail, body damage likely, winch out exit, recovery tools, two lockers, should I say 39's minimum? Uh-oh, maybe I shouldn't hop on this, guys. It says body damage likely, winch out exit. Carnage Canyon, Extreme 4 before route, recovery tools. I do have recovery tools. I do have two lockers. I have a first aid kit. 39s. I'm on 35s. This already, right to begin with, looks pretty sketch just to get up in here. Gosh. What am I doing? How the <laughs> get through here? That's like a buggy line. There's no way I'm getting through there. And through here... Yeah, I can see why they say body damage likely. I mean, passenger tire here, driver's tire here, still a high probability you're gonna get kicked into this huge boulder. And then even when I get up here, it's just a boulder field, but much larger boulders than anything else I've encountered. I mean, there's winch points, so I could potentially winch myself up, but 
I'm not prepared to get body damage. I think this is gonna be a little too much. I think if I'm ever gonna come back here, I need to be at least on 37s before I'd, I'd ever try this. Cause just to get into here looks daunting to say the least. And I need to make it back out of here. So there's just no way. I think I've made the final decision that it's probably best if I just leave out that gate over there that's open um, and not go back the same way I came because some of that stuff I came down was super sketch and I said that it would be super sketchy to go back up. Not as sketchy as this stuff, but this just is not passable for my vehicle. Like it could potentially get through here, but I'm gonna break something and I'll get stuck out here. That's what's gonna happen because I didn't realize it. It's, I thought 35s was the minimum for this trail. It's 39s for Carnage Canyon. So Carnage Canyon, once you turn on to this part, it's a whole nother ball game. I mean, this is almost like rock buggy I mean, not full body vehicles. Like I've seen a few YouTubers go through here, but I can't remember. They might've gotten body damage. I'm just not prepared to get body damage. Maybe one day we can come back and try this, but that day's not today. And I think since the rain is coming in and it's just gonna get worse, that would be a bad idea for me to try to go back uphill. And since there is an exit out here, it's just gonna be best to exit through here. So unfortunately I'm not one who likes to call it quits, but it still was quite a rough trail and uh, hopefully I got some good video and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So that goes to show you what you can still do on 35 inch tires. And I never needed my lockers the whole time. So if you have a Sahara or a Sport, um, it will be more difficult with those just because those don't have the same transfer case. So they don't have the four to one, um, they don't have the same transfer case gear ratio. So it will be more difficult to crawl them. But if you have 35s on a Sahara or a Sport, I was able to get to where I'm at now down that side of Chinaman Gulch all without using lockers. Now, quite a bit of it was downhill. There was some uphill, but since it's starting to rain, I just don't feel comfortable trying to head back uphill. It's just too risky. I mean, the only person I've encountered on this whole trail is this guy right here on his dirt bike, just around the corner. That's it. I haven't encountered anybody else. So that means I'll be stranded out here. I can see why not many people do this route. It's sketch. Deep made it through and no body damage. We didn't do the whole route, like I said, kind of cheated, but I have to play it safe because I have to make it home. By the way, I'm from Iowa. I have to make it like 1,000, 1,100 miles home. So I don't really want to break anything. And there's a certain point where you have to call it where it's just not worth it. I think the most, the hardest hits, I think we're down on the, uh, probably on the bumper. We came down on the bumper pretty hard a couple times. I'm surprised we didn't come down on the exhaust. The exhaust is still looking all right. We definitely skidded across the bottom of the shock, that shock. We skidded across the bottom of my diff housing. Let's see. Skid plate for the uh, gas tank, definitely skidded across that. I don't think we really skidded across the rock sliders much, maybe a little bit, but rock sliders didn't really get hit much. I think we hit more frame rail. So you can see over there, we slid on the frame rail, slid on the gas tank. Uh, we slid on, I do have an engine and transmission skid. We skidded on that a little bit too. So you definitely want to have, you definitely want to have skid plates if you're going to try this trail though. That's a must. I don't think we ever, well, we did hit our bumper a little bit. That's not bad. I do have an aluminum tie rod from uh, Barnes four wheel drive. That's a 775 aluminum. I'm also running GM one ton or one and a half ton rod ends. So I can't tell you if with a stock Jeep, if it would do all right with the stock tie rod, because you could potentially bend the tie rod on some of those rocks if you land on them. Because this actually has a lot of flex to it, this tie rod, that's the reason why I bought it. Because unlike a steel tie rod, this 775 aluminum one will actually bend if it lands directly on a rock. So as you can see, it still looks perfectly straight. And then I got a steering stabilizer from Fox. Doesn't look like we really hit that. I've got the uh, track bar system from uh, Yeti. Uh, steer, uh, I think it's called Steer Smart. Yep, skid it across the front. Otherwise, not bad. I had fun, but some of it was definitely challenging. So, we'll wrap up the video. Thanks for watching. See you later.